Hey everybody, I want to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. This is Steve coming back with another video for your enjoyment. Um, in this series, we're going to just be doing some random programming and just kind of just letting it lay out there. The whole point of this is to try to get myself started on a marathon, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I had just reshifted the computer there and just reoriented the screen. Anyway, let's get started on this. Okay, and just to kind of uh, set the air for people, for those who do not come from this generation, in the old days, this is how we did it. We sat in front of a computer screen hooked up to a black and white television pretty often, or just a color television. In this series, I'll be using what's called a Windows emulated environment with a tool that is called WinVice that allows you to interact with their live Commodore 64 system as if you were plugging into an actual physical system. So, like I said, it's going to be a simple, basic course. Um, what you're seeing is an actual startup mode on the Commodore 64 game here. So I'm trying to keep up with it. So if I'm talking fast, excuse me on that. So, in order to be able to start an actual program, you have to be able to feed information into its memory. Right now, it's just inf run information is just running in the background. And it looks virtually like nothing's going on. But the computer is written in actual compiled basic language. And it's waiting for instruction. It's called an interpreted language. So here we're just going to go ahead and just type in a line number 10. You can start them with 5. Um, 10 is just kind of a standard in those days. And what we're going to do is we're going to just set like, kind of like um, what's called a commenting system. And REM is actually known as a remark. It allows you to essentially put comments after it. So in this example, we could just say example 1 or whatever you want to call it. And the next thing we would do is set a line 20. Now, one thing that I like to do as a standard is setting like a colon on the line. It simply acts like a simple comment statement, but it basically it's the same thing as just basically ignoring that line. I use it to kind of create a little bit more room and put more margin between my programming. So the next thing we are going to be doing is we are going to be clearing the screen, and that is done with what is known as a print character to the string of 147. This is actually a character pulling from a character set on the Commodore 64 which allows it to clear the screen. We'll run it and you'll get an example. See? Now the screen has been cleared and we are good to go. So, the next thing to do is go ahead and just write another simple part to the program here. We could begin writing an actual statement saying, for example, and you have to proceed this by an open uh, quote and then we could just say this is example 1, for example. And you have to close it with a quote so that the computer understands that you're actually creating a statement that makes sense in its memory. And this is actually known as a string and it basically tokenizes the data and keeps it together at the same time. Um, the next thing a lot of people like to do, and this is in the old days, but it's kind of doing a repeat statement. I'll show you this first. We just go ahead and we type go to 40 afterward and we hit enter. I mean, sorry, we hit run. So what we are actually doing essentially is we are taking line 40 and we are just basically going back to it over and over again in what's known as an endless loop. So let's get that going here. So now look at that surprise. Now we're looking at a complete example running program but that is simply just repeating information infinitely down to your screen. Not too exciting, but that's kind of what it was in the days. And the next thing we are going to be looking into doing is changing some color and adding a little bit more variety to the background here. So I'm going to sneak in a few other lines here. And what we're going to be doing is adding in additional lines to make this a little bit more variety. You know, a little bit more exciting, hopefully. Um, this is also known as um, what's called poking into the memory. A way of a poke statement is basically taking a memory location and looking inside of its contents and executing an actual program behind the scenes. In this case, we are going to use poke 53280, which is a decimal mode. And we are going to set the screen to uh, black. This is actually, let's do just a red. This is the border color as an example. And then we could also perceive this by a remark statement if we needed to and say border to black or something like that. And just go ahead and run it. <clears throat> I said black, excuse me, red. Yes, of course, black was my first choice, but black, you wouldn't really see it. It would just darken out the whole screen. Um, on, and around the border is the thing you're seeing kind of going around the screen in red there, obviously, right now. You can see it. Now, there's also a variety of 16 colors you can actually change it to. Um, I probably wanted to demonstrate every single one of them here, but you could go ahead, for example, and change this to a 3, or and you'll get the next color in sequence, which is green, of course. <clears throat> Not too bad, I guess. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually change the screen background. I'm going to insert an under line of 33. We are going to use another memory statement known as um, basically changing the screen background color. 
and we are setting that one to black, just as an example of starting out. So 53281, 53281, comma zero will turn the screen to black, and I'll put it screen to black so we kind of know. And earlier I set this, to, let me fix that to green so we can be a little bit more correct here in our statements and we are going to go ahead and run now you see the screen has turned black and we still got the green border going around exactly okay so now we're looking at our endless loop kind of going around the screen while it's a little bit interesting what we want to do is we want to actually add some more color to this to make it a little bit more exciting right so we are going to sneak in a new line here i'm going to just use line 34 to stay in sequence with what i'm doing here and we are going to use a memory location called poke 646 646 which stores the color in memory and we'll just start it off with a simple color of one which will be white so you'll see the screen turn to white i mean the text to white and there you go the text is now white now now not totally exciting at the same time you can see that comma 64 did offer a little bit more variety and maybe some other computers there we'll go ahead and change this one to red just to show you the text will now be red a little bit harder to see there of course and we are going to just turn this to like a yellow color. And like I said, I'm not going to go through every single color because you can actually look this up on, you know, whether it's in Google or whatever, just pulling the book out. And knowing that there are actually the, the 16 colors you can use, which are 0 to 15. 0 being black all the way up to the 15. And then after that, they just, they just recycle. Okay. So essentially, we've already turned the screen to white. We're also going to do something else, a little bit more variety here. We're going to go down at the end of this, and we're going to add what's known as a semicolon. And now that we got our text, what it's going to do, instead of keeping it and repeating it on one line, it's actually going to kind of, basically, it's going to squish it all together at the same time. So there'll be no more returns. Now you see it looks a little bit more weird, but you can see what it's doing. It's just basically taking one after the other, and there's no carriage return there, of course. Okay, next thing you can also do here um, to add a little bit more variety is in the front of this here, you can throw a little comma here, and this will give it a little bit of what's known as tabbing. You'll see it uh, basically inserts it over there a little bit. So it's kind of, you know, say centered, in, but it's basically tabbed it along the way. You could do some other interesting things. There's just so many things that you can do. You see what it kind of did there? Set another bigger tab and kind of example and stuff like that. So I think what the next thing we could do, um, I'll introduce the variables here real quick so we can add a little bit more variety to the program. A uh, variable is preceded by a letter, and a letter afterward is going to need a number that is going to be utilized somewhere in your program. In this example, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing some of the color backgrounds. So number 35, we are going to, um, and, and the, the correct way really to do this honestly would be to store it somewhere earlier in your memory in case you need to reuse that variable. In this case, we're probably not going to. I'm just going to call this C, C by the way. In Common 64, it's always, um, it's always proper to do two characters when using a variable. Although you can do one, I, it's just proper to do two. We'll set this one for the very beginning to one, which we know was our white color originally when we added it into memory location 646. And lo and behold, we're going to now take this variable and instead of 7, we're going to replace it with CO, which is going to be our 1, for example. Now we're going to go ahead and run the program and get an ideal there. Now we're still seeing the same thing, right? We saw it before, nothing is different. But now we, instead of allowing, going in and changing an actual memory location each time, all we have to do is tweak our variable like that and instantly we are already changing the color just like that. We don't even need to even mess with the, the poke statement anymore. Next thing I'd like to be able to do is uh, show you how to increment, basically to increase the value of a uh, variable that is already stored in memory. And so what we're going to be doing is uh, 35. We are going to increase this. So that is basically just taking CO. And to increase the value, you just add and repeat the variable one after the other like that. And then you would be adding a plus sign as soon as I can locate where that is. It's right here. I'm also using um, a WinVice emulator. So on the keyboard, it's emulating the Commodore 64 keyboard, but in a Windows environment. So sometimes if you're not actually in front of that computer, it can be a little bit awkward trying to figure out where characters are. And it's just because your key placement is a little bit different than your actual Windows key would be. But anyways, let's go ahead and we'll set that. And I'm going to throw a little surprise in here, but I'm not gonna show you yet. I'm just gonna throw a little surprise and we're gonna watch the colors change first. Oh, actually, my bad. I forgot to put it uh, very importantly here. 
Um, we are now looking at essentially what's known as a bug in the program. See what it's doing. It's going back to line 40, but it's never reaching line 35, right? It's only going to this one. Instead, what we're going to be doing, changing this to 34 so we can get that repeated color on the screen. And there you go. But I'm going to let it run for a little bit. And twiddle my thumbs while I'm waiting. May take a moment here. There you go. What is this legal quantity error, you ask? Okay, so look at line 34, so we can kind of learn a little bit more from it. Okay, I see nothing awkward here. What you want to do is, when you get an illegal quantity error, which means out of range, you just want to go ahead and print that value. You can see 256. You're like, 256? What does that mean? 256 is basically exceeded the range that is used by this actual statement in memory. Since um, in memory, you can only hold values between 0 and 255. Now, in order to protect against this, what we need to do is set up what I used to call boundary or even limits of how far you want that variable to go before either resetting it or cycling or doing something else like maybe in the program itself. In this example, we are going to use what's called a condition. A condition will allow us to actually check that value to make sure it has not exceeded a certain range. Now, what you need to do actually is type if after it. If is the way of saying if. I'm going to do something if I'm going to walk through this door then you know I'm outside or whatever it is in this case we are going to say if the variable of co you want to read it like that and we're going to say if it's greater than so if there's a value in memory and it's not above another number then it's okay to proceed but if this number somehow has exceeded the number that's currently before it then we need to do something. So in other words, we don't want to go beyond 256, right? So what we need to do is say is if CO is greater than 255, which we know is our max variable, right? Then what we are going to do is safely reset the value back to 1. But at the same time, as a little surprise here, I'm going to throw in value nearly exceeded. So we know at that point that we have reached that just to kind of throw a little teaser out there for you um, so we're going to go ahead and run the program again and also making sure we're going back to that line just to go ahead and double check your information here you can see 50 is going back to 34 safely right and it's just what it does is it goes down from one to the next 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 until it hits that go to and then go to will send it back to where it came from so in this case we're pretty safe so we'll just let it run again I feel like I could be playing some Jeopardy music right now. And we'll see what happens here. In my memory, my message should be coming up, or I have screwed something up here. It's 255 we're waiting on. And there it goes. See it? Value nearly exceeded. And I actually put exceed, but exceeded. And get the point exceeded there and you can just type over whenever you want to correct something you probably see me doing this when you go back up here over a line like that it's just basically re-entering that information back into the computer's memory so that we can receive the newer changes kind of like saving a document in word or whatever okay now that we've actually done that we've actually done a little bit more cool things with this program kind of proceeding forward now what we want to do is we want to kind of step up the game here and probably do a little bit more. I mean, I'll probably do some edit variety, like maybe changing the border colors after a certain period of time. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting an interval. When it reaches a certain interval, like a count of, we could say like 16, then maybe we're going to flash the border with a different color. I'll show you how that's done here. Go to line 37 here and say, if CO is equal to the integer value of CO divided by 16, so 16 counts, right? Oh, actually, I did this wrong. CO16, excuse me, is equal to the integer value of CO divided by 16. There we go. Then we want to flash that border our color, right? So what we'll basically do is we'll just throw the... Probably don't want to use the CO. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw a random value out here. Um, this will just pick something right out of the rabbit's hat and just kind of throw it to the screen here. And I think what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to set this safely to a memory location. I'm adding one to it so it doesn't start at zero because you might not see it. it. It could go to black, but it just wouldn't be as interesting, I think. And then we're going to multiply it by the total. Remember, colors was 16. And it's going to pick that value and flash it to the border screen. Probably to make this a little bit more interesting, I think I'm going to use eight. 
I think we'll be okay with that. Because otherwise you got to wait that whole interval for 16. Although, here goes. Watch. Let's see what we got here. There's one. There's two. So see, now we got a cycling kind of interesting program going on here, right? Probably might want to reformat our text, but I just wanted to show you. It's cycling through every eight interventions in the computer's memory. Now, if we go back, of course, and change that to a 16 here. And I'm going to um, get my screen back here for a second. And change this to the 16th. And let's make this a little bit more interesting. I don't mean to throw too much at you, but I'm going to set this to an actual variable. 81, 1, plus integer random 0 times nm. And I may need to do a pause here. Okay, guys, I'm back, and I'm just rerunning the program to show you that we have now gone ahead and corrected it. And you can see that it's now changing on intervals of 16 here. We could also make a change on intervals of the random value if we wanted, but I wanted to show you how it was working in that example. Let's clean up our text a little bit here. I'm not always too fond of tabs here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and take the comma out of here. And we should be good to clean it up a little bit there. Now you got two clean rows going on. You also see where it says this is example one, this is example one. Since we're going down the screen here and we're going to be changing the value, I'm going to basically keep track of a running total in memory that basically keeps track of how many examples. I'll just call it EX for example, and we'll start that at zero just to be actually, let's see, one, because we want to start at the correct value in memory. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting this inside of an actual what's known as a string, which is another way of attaching it to its actual memory location. And this will change the memory location. Um, the only time I want to change it though is when, once we reach that 16th era, that 16th value in memory, every other interval value of 16 to kind of see the effect going on here. And here we go. One, two, three, four, and you can see it cycling through. As it's changing the colors, it's hitting those values perfectly in memory just as it should. And there's all the 16 values. And you see right there it says value near exceeded. So we are perfectly at our game here. The goal is to try to get at least three videos a week. Ooh, I don't know if I'm gonna make it, but I'm gonna do my best I can. And I'm talking fast also, excuse me on that. I'll try to put this on my website, by the way, because the reason I'm talking fast is to keep, to keep in within this time frame as well. So if this has been a little bit confusing to you, I apologize. Definitely get back with me in the comments or get back with me on the website. I'd definitely be happy to explain anything and, you know, tie up those loose ends for you. Thank you guys for watching so much, and let's keep this marathon going. And don't forget, as always, to subscribe. You want more for your value, I'm going to give you everything you can in return. Thank you so much.